Oklahoma Zone News on 6 starts now. First at 6 o'clock tonight, Tulsa police arrest a woman for the third time in the past month for burglary and having stolen property. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lori Fulbright. And I'm Craig Day. Police arrested Melissa Swede for burglary in August. She bonded out. She was arrested a week later, bonded out, and was arrested again yesterday. News on 6's Reagan Ledbetter has the details. The Tulsa Police Burglary Unit says Melissa Swede has spent her summer stealing from innocent victims. Now they have several file folders full of cases tied to Sweet. Throughout the time, we've had different surveillance videos that, that showed up and popped up that showed us suspect information and suspect vehicles. Uh, Detective Kerbitz did some follow-up on it and was able to determine that this was our individual that was uh, committing committing these or involved with these. Police say Sweet broke into a home in Rogers County in August and stole several items. That victim used GPS to track her property to a car parked at a Tulsa apartment. Police arrested Sweet, but she bonded out. Then a week later, police say a homeowner caught Sweet on surveillance video stealing from him. Detectives recognized Sweet and her car in the video. It had been to that house more than once, so it was more than one instance where this vehicle was seen over there and these suspects were seen at this burnt house. Sweet bonded out of jail again, but this week police searched her car and found the backpack full of stolen credit cards, checks, and IDs. I don't know if she does it for a living or if there's another reason she's doing it, whether it's to support a habit or what, I'm not sure. Uh, but I would consider this person a serial burglar and a serial thief, yes. Lieutenant Tim Means says serial thieves like Sweet create a lot of victims. It's kind of a revolving door for us that we see a lot of the same people over and over because there's a lot of different things that happen through the court system where they don't do a lot of time in prison. That was Reagan Ledbetter reporting. Record shows Sweet pled guilty to stealing back in 2005 and again in 2011 and both times was given a deferred sentence. The Tulsa County Sheriff's Office has closed part of 56th Street North, where they've been searching on horseback for 82-year-old James Morrison, who's been missing for more than 24 hours. This is a live look at that area right now. The road's closed between Highway 169 and 145th East Avenue. His family told deputies he didn't have his phone on him, and they've been worried sick. We'll keep you updated on the search. Rain and showers and storms have moved out of the area. That was uh, some good rains for some. In fact, I had a call from a friend down in Wilberton and ended up with about four and a half inches of rain. It has been a long time since they've seen rain like that down in the southeast. So everything is all quiet now across the area. Perfect timing for Friday night football and some of those rains again. Pretty awesome uh, and an inch of rain around Tulsa Common an inch, inch and a half for several and then in couple areas south and east Tulsa a lot more. Our temperatures have been rain cooled all day. We've been in the 70s and a few low 80s still popping up around the area. It looks like a great Friday night for football games. Our game time temperatures here in the 70s through the evening. Southeast breeze blowing at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. What are we going to talk about? Well, it's quiet for now. We're going to have to dodge some severe storms over the weekend and we're going to say hello fall and spring all at the same time. Your forecast coming up. State Superintendent Ryan Walter says he has proof Tulsa Public Schools is accepting money from the Chinese government. Walter sent the legislature a memo, he says, explains the TPS partnership with the Confucius Classroom Program. That program was created by the Chinese government. TPS has denied getting any money from the Chinese government. The district says it only has one teacher who participates in that program, and TPS says the teacher's salary and the classroom materials are being paid for entirely by the district. Oklahoma Congressman Frank Lucas is heading back to the U.S. Capitol seven weeks after being injured by a bull on his ranch. Lucas says he was loading the bull onto a trailer when it suddenly turned and ran back past him, crushing Lucas's hip joint and pelvis. The congressman says he'll have to use a walker and wheelchair for a few months, but his doctors say he'll make a full recovery. He was a pole, but if he hit me with his head, uh, we'd be talking about a special election now. Congressman Lucas' first day back will be Wednesday, four days before the deadline to pass a funding bill and avoid a government shutdown. The Tulsa Planning Office wants some ideas on possible plans to rezone part of 71st Street. The City Council is considering zoning that would make it easier to build more businesses between Memorial and Garnett. Tulsans are invited to a public forum Monday night at 6 in the Grand Hall of Union High School. People who love planes can see some old war planes tomorrow at the Bartlesville Airport for the Back to Bartlesville fly-in. That event is back for the first time in many years. News on 6's Amy Slanchek takes us to the skies.
Connecting the young and the young at heart, the Back to Bartlesville fly-in is officially back. It's been since 2009 was the last event, and that's when the organization that had put them on for several years uh, disassembled. Nine-year-old Emberly Griffin, dressed head to toe as a wasp, is no stranger to the skies or historic plains. I've been in a lot. A B-17 and a B-29, a Cessna, um, the Wildcat, which is over there, and a lots of others. On display inside a hangar are the photos of several World War II veterans from Bartlesville. Emberly has her very own booth with a scrapbook full of aviation memories. And this has been my favorite plane ever since I've met her. Her name is Fifi. She's a B-29. The event continues tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. with more planes expected to fly in than they did today because of the weather. Billy Roan helps put on the event and is also a city councilor. She's excited the fly-in is back after 14 years. For me it's about young people. There are many young people here that have never been this close to an airplane, much less seen historical aircraft like they're seeing here today. And seeing these planes up close just might help a career take off. Getting the plane ready might be the best part, but I think flying may actually be the best part. In Bartlesville, Amy Slanchik, Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. Isn't she, she is something? She's the coolest kid on earth. She is cool. <laughs> to know all that, to <laughs> no, love those old airplanes, so. good for her. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know the late Hollywood movie star James Garner was actually born in Oklahoma. So we're going to give you a sneak peek of how he's going to be featured at the OK Pop Museum once it opens. And we'll check in with the Sooners and Cowboys ahead of their Big 12 conference openers. Galaxy Home Recreation is overstocked. Millions of dollars in excess inventory, and it must go now. At ABES Roofing, we have one of the largest fleets in the state. Literally. It's right over there! Oh yeah! It needs a new roof! Zero percent financing is back at Jim Norton Chevy. Plus, you can still get double rebate values on brand new 2023s. You can't afford to miss this. Hurry to Jim Norton Chevy and shop an incredible selection of brand new Chevys. Get 0% financing, 0%. Plus get double rebate values on new 2023 Silverados. Come on, Tulsa, who does all that? Jim Norton's Chevy. In Broken Arrow. I'm Bob Mills and I care a lot about accurate weather reporting. News on 6 works 24-7 to make sure you always stay weather aware from the Bob Mills Weather Center. This is your season to smile, to gather together and discover the moments that matter, to jump into the fun and join in the celebration. To help get you ready, your Aspen Dental team is celebrating 25 years of affordable care with an epic anniversary savings event. Right now, new patients without insurance get a free full exam and x-rays. Plus, everyone can get 20% off their treatment plan. But hurry, because while the season won't last, the memories you make together will. Aspen Dental. Book today. Every day, we rise so that together we shine. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma understands what it means to shine a light on the helpers, the healers, the ones building a lasting future of wellness for all of us. Together, we're on this journey raising expectations, empowering Blue Cross members with the newest technologies, fulfilling our oldest promise to be forever by your side, rising together toward a healthier tomorrow through it all. Come by today and experience the Matthews Ford difference. MatthewsFordBA.com Let's get to roofing, guys. Whether you need a replacement or a repair, ABEST has you covered with one of the largest fleets in the state. Literally. To report on crime, you have to shine a light into dark places. You need courage to follow the facts. Compassion to give victims' families a voice and help keep your community safe. One Tulsa journalist has the passion to make that kind of difference. A crime expert, a victim's advocate, fighting for you. Lori Fulbright, only on Oklahoma Zone, News on 6. Well, the Midway is already starting to take shape for the Tulsa State Fair. Crews are setting up some of the bigger rides at Expo Square, like the roller coasters and the swinging ship. 
Before the fair can open, all the rides, of course, will be inspected by the Labor Department. Then the Health Department will check all the food vendors. The fair opens in only six days. Six days, and we'll be out there. We want people to come and say hi. Absolutely. Come on out. Donate money to Food for Kids. It'll be fun. You bet. Well, the MK Pop Museum is honoring a movie and TV star from Oklahoma with the help of his daughter. James Garner was born in Norman, and his daughter tells News on 6's Jaden Brannon why Oklahoma means so much to the family. The OK Pop Museum has been patiently waiting to welcome people through its front doors. It finally got to do that for a couple hours today while honoring an Oklahoma native. It's wonderful to see really this space filled with people as we honor and celebrate Oklahoma's own James Garner. While dozens of people came to see Garner's memorabilia from his time on set in the Rockford Files and Maverick, his daughter Gigi reminisced on her father's love for the Sooner State. My dad always spoke about the resilience of the Oklahomans and he always brought up the fact in almost every interview that he was from Oklahoma. He was so proud of it. OK Pop has several of Garner's items like pictures, props, and his suit from his time on Maverick. It's also displaying the Purple Heart he received after serving in the Korean War. Gigi says she loves sharing her father's things and wants it to stay in the state he loved. Well, I'm just glad that I can continue on his legacy by having his things here in his home state. Gigi lives in California, but says it's critical for her to stay attached to this state even though she wasn't born here. My dad was most proud of being an Oklahoman and I want to make sure people know that and they recognize that and they remember that. She believes people will enjoy getting to see her father's things but wants them to remember his legacy another way. One of the most important things that my dad was interested in was making sure people remembered him with a smile. She hopes that once the OK Pop Museum eventually opens, people will do just that. If you weren't able to catch Gardner's memorabilia on display today, you'll be able to check it out in the Imagine Worlds exhibit when the OK Pop Museum opens. In Tulsa, Jaden Brannon, Oklahoma's own News on 6. Well, tomorrow is the first day of fall, but it's going to feel a little bit more like springtime in Oklahoma. Travis tells us when more rain and storms could move through the Osage Casino Skycam Network. Savings. Discounts. The best bargains. At Ollie's, we've got brand name merchandise at up to 70% off the fancy store prices every day. I get to keep more money in my pocket. Ollie! Good stuff cheap! T-Town Chevy pays more for pre-owns, period. We're buying hundreds of vehicles, any make, any model, any price range. So log on at ttownchevypaysmore.com or come see us today at Tulsa's authorized Kelly Blue Book Buying Center and we'll give you a top of the line offer for your vehicle in 15 minutes. The deal of a lifetime. T-Town Chevy pays more and we'll prove it. So hurry to Jim Norton's T-Town Chevrolet, I-44 Memorial or log on at ttownchevypaysmore.com. Discounts, the best bargains. At Ollie's, we've got brand name merchandise at up to 70% off the fancy store prices every day. I get to keep more money in my pocket. Ollie! Good stuff, cheap! Everybody all set? This ain't checkers, this is chess. You're about to play it with masters. Oh, what a night it's gonna be. It's gonna be awesome. Sunday on CBS. The biggest story in sports. <laughs> Everyone's forgotten who runs this rally. Could a blind side be in the work? <laughs> Just tell me you to fight. Everyone. 
city leaders are cutting the ribbon on some new improvements in downtown Sand Springs. Pretty exciting stuff. Voters approved $1 million for the work in 2018. The city added new landscaping and lighting at First and Main, along with a new crosswalk and ADA compliant sidewalks. It looks really nice. The mayor says the upgrades make that area more attractive to businesses and shoppers. If you watch the development around Sand Springs, if you haven't been here in years, you just wouldn't even, wouldn't even know the place. We had so much development in every area, and it's just important to keep it looking good for the citizens and keep offering new things. And the city plans to make similar improvements one block to the north at 2nd Street. From the Bob Mills Weather Center, the Oklahoma weather expert, Travis Meyer. And we're just going to have to have that Chamber of Commerce weather continue just forever for Sand Springs, Broken Arrow, Jinx, Owasso, just name it, uh, because we're seeing so much redevelopment in uh, much of the metro area. The only thing that we're not seeing redevelopment of, thunderstorms. We've had, we've pretty much run our course with those. We have had clouds moving through, temperatures in the 70s. Check this out, 98 at Altus right now, and it's 100 in Hollis, which is in the far southwest corner of the state. So there are some high school games tonight that are going to start out really, really hot, but not here. It is looking awesome. Uh, temperatures have been in the 70s. We'll be in the 70s through the evening hours and no rain. A slight southeast wind, I'd say 5 to 15, averaging maybe 10 miles per hour. The further southeast you are, the lighter the winds will be for tonight. Uh, as far as tomorrow game day, we have to go to DeKalb, Illinois, 11 a.m. for TU. will be a nice day. Kickoff at 71, 68 with kickoff in Cincinnati for OU. Only place could see some problems, Ames, Iowa. OSU could see as showers and thunderstorms, gusty winds in the afternoon. A few of those could be strong. So again, we'll keep an eye on that. Race for the Cure is tomorrow morning, and it should be a wonderful morning. Leanne and the team and everyone else is going to be out there again. Perfect weather. Maybe a little breezy, but that's about it. And then we have Pioneer Day Festival going on. Sky took also in Cleveland, and we have Finn and Feather Fall Festival going on in Gore Creek County Free Fair going on down at Calleville and here in Tulsa. Of course, the Greek Festival going on right now. I'm so hungry. I just want to go over there and just enjoy it. And so that's going on again through tomorrow. All right, so nothing on radar right now. So a quiet night underway. That's not going to be the case in 24 hours from now. Showers and storms, some heavy and severe hail, wind, isolated tornado risk encompasses a pretty big chunk of our entire viewing area. So again, if you would make sure you're aware of the weather tomorrow, late afternoon and evening, we'll be covering that uh, with a fine tooth comb. Right now, though, I'd sure like to find some rain for the folks up into Chautauqua County in Kansas, northwestern Osage County. Man, I tell you, we have just not been very lucky. Rain has really kicked in a little bit more in southern Oklahoma, but there's still serious droughts going on, even up into Kansas. And this last rain event uh, was pretty good. And over the last 60 days, though, there's still this pocket right up here. And you can't go in the middle of summer, basically from July into August and September and uh, the end of summer, however you want to look at that, but uh, just hardly any rain. And that's been the case down in South Central Oklahoma as well. So again, just in the last 24 hours, anywhere from Wilberton, McAllister areas really picked up a lot of rain the last uh, 24 hours. And uh, so there's good news there. High clouds moving across the area at this point. We're looking at 77 degrees. Dew point is at 68. So there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. We have a south wind at 17. So breezy conditions in 70s. It is just so, so nice. And most of eastern Oklahoma, same story showing up right now with partly cloudy skies and through the overnight time period, not much happening here. We'll be in the 60s to low 70s, get us going tomorrow morning. And then during the day, relatively quiet. Noontime, we'll have gustier south winds moving in. Warm to humid to, I mean, you could say hot if you want to. 100 is hot, and that'll be southwest Oklahoma. We'll be near 90. Heat index value as well in the 90s, maybe 100. Notice there's a boundary right in here, and that boundary blows up thunderstorm big time tomorrow evening. Those storms will have very large hail. Some of them are going to be very heavy, and in fact, some of our models are even kind of hinting, and they have been for the last 12 hours, of four to six inches of rain and a few of the heaviest of the downpours of rain. Then we'll have strong damaging winds. And there's an isolated tornado risk in this. Dynamics are close enough that we could actually have a few spinners going on. And then that'll start to end and wind down as we go through early Sunday morning. We'll be in the 60s on Sunday morning. The only thing that'll be left over is a passing sprinkle, maybe during the daytime hours, but temperatures in the 80s, gorgeous. So tomorrow, late afternoon, we're going to be watching this area north and west of Tulsa, and then it really encompasses the entire area for tomorrow night. So that's what we want you to be aware of. Wind gust potential is pretty doggone high. Hail size larger than a golf ball size, and then some flooding potential, isolated, and then there is that tornado risk. So those are the things we'll be watching, and the highest chance will be late tomorrow into March tomorrow night with that threat of weather. After that, it is smooth sailing for the Tulsa State Fair. All right, so tonight is smooth sailing for our football games. 
Temperatures expected to be in the 70s all evening long. Southeast winds. Great morning for Race for the Cure, 60s. And by afternoon, warm. We're going to just say hot, even though it's the time of the year when we should be around 80 for high. We'll be near 90, so we're going to call 90 hot, even though we're used to 100. All right, as we extend the forecast, you go, what? There's sunshine? There's no bad weather? As Tulsa State Fair begins? What? What? We say that a lot. <laughs> what? So, again, prepare for tomorrow night and just say what about next week? Because that's mm -hmm. pretty. Just crazy. enjoy next week. Yeah. All right, thank Wait, you. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? what? I shouldn't have started that. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> you know, it's Friday. You know what? what's going on. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Asking me what's going on. <laughs> football, that's what's going on. High school football continues tonight, and that means the start of district play. That includes our Tulsa Tech Game of the Week. We'll have a live preview from Muskogee as the Ruffers are set to host Sand Springs next in sports. If you've ever wished you could take buffalo chicken dip wherever you go, today's your lucky day. Because Sonic stuffed it in a crispy, portable bite. Now wish for something else, like more hands to hold your bites. Sonic 299 Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. You bring it, we'll buy it at Jim Norton Toyota. Hurry, Jim Norton's buying hundreds of vehicles, any make, any model, any price range. And our goal is to beat any trade-in offer by $1,000. Just give us 15 minutes and we'll give you a top-of-the-line offer to buy your vehicle cash on the spot. So log on at JimNortonToyota.com or make the one call that'll get you the most money for your vehicle. Then hurry to Jim Norton Toyota, 9809 South Memorial, where T-Town gets Toyota. Never miss breaking news or weather coverage anywhere you go. News on 6 Streaming, brought to you by A-Best Roofing. Protecting what matters. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA, like straight lines that seem wavy, Blurry or missing visual spots that make it hard to see faces, like this one. Or trouble with low light, that makes driving at night a real challenge. If you've been diagnosed with AMD and notice vision changes, don't wait. GA is irreversible. It's important to catch it early. Talk to your eye doctor about GA and learn more at gawontwait.com. It's time we shake things up, create some change, not nickel and dime change, real change. Like where you get to have a voice, where you're seen as an actual real life person, not just a transaction. See, banking should be about you, the customer, deciding what good customer service is. So let's build this thing together and create that change. This is your gateway to all the things your bank should be. The new 2023 GMC Sierra AT4X is equipped to conquer the great outdoors or the great indoors. Welcome to the peak of premium off-roading or get 0.9% APR and no monthly payments until 2024. Plus get 2,500 purchase allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle on 2023 Sierra Denali 5.3 liter V8 light duty models. Tulsa's only full-time news helicopter, Osage Sky News 6. There comes a time in every dip's life when it's ready to leave the slow cooker, even buffalo chicken dip. So we put juicy chicken, buffalo sauce, and melty cheese in a portable crispy golden shell. Run away, dip. You're free now. Sonic 299 Buffalo Chicken Dip Bites. What would you do if you only had one life to live? Well, that's kind of how this whole thing works. So bite off more than you can chew. Don't wait for someone else's green light. Go after what they say you can't. Oklahoma needs more doers, and doers don't wait. Get skilled, get paid. Tulsa Tech, powered by Oklahoma Career Tech. Driven by your Oklahoma Ford dealers, this is News on 6 Sports with Jonathan Husky. These are the games that matter tops the window world sports desk tonight. It is week four of the high school football season, but the first week of district play, this is when the games really count. From now on, playoff spots on the line each and every week. That includes our Tulsa Tech game of the week between Sand Springs and Muskogee. Raven Ray is live at the home of the Ruffers, where these two 6A2 powers are set to square off. Raven. 
Yes, Jonathan, you're exactly right. These are the games that matter, and there is a lot to do here for both of these teams as they both are coming into this two and one from the non-district schedule. We start off with the Sandites. They have a dual threat at the running back position. Both Ollie and Kenneth pair well together as the face of the offense, and the head coach seems to think so as well. Well, I, I think they're both doing very well. Um, the biggest thing that I told both these guys is that we want these guys fresh. Um, maybe if you watch the college game, a lot, a lot of teams are now using multiple running backs. That's what I've told them is that, hey, when you guys are fresh in the fourth quarter, I mean, it, it's good for everybody. And, and, th and those two have been great. Ali and uh, Kenneth have just really uh, taken to it. Um, they're, they're each other's biggest fans, so it, it's kind of fun to watch. Now onto the rougher side, they have a multi-talented quarterback commanding the offense. Jamarian Ficklin has the arm and the legs to keep Muskogee's offense in a lot of games coming up. He's a special leader. I, I think that's where we start off at first. I mean, uh, he's not the most vocalist kid in the world, but some of the way his actions and his work ethic shows you that he is in charge and uh, he demands it that way. And uh, you can see the other kids work for him. It's been like that for a long time. It, it, you know, he has not had that command just recently. He's had that when he was in junior high. Muskogee won last year's meeting 48 to 26. But we can probably expect another high scoring game right here. Both teams are looking to start their district schedule out with a win, but it only will come down to one winner by the end of the night. Here at Muskogee at Ruffer Village, I'm Raven Ray, Oklahoma Zone News on Six Sports. Elsewhere, monster matchup at Union Tuttle Stadium as Owasso comes to town in a rematch of last year's state semifinals with Union. Bixby hosts Norman North. Broken Arrow looks for their first win of the year with Southmore in town. Bartlesville visits Booker T. Washington and Coweta visits Glenpool. All that 10-19 tonight on the Oklahoma Ford Friday Football Blitz. Our very own Jonathan Cooper was at Lincoln Christian today for the TTCU Federal Credit Union Spirit Stick. The Bulldogs set to host Barry Hill tonight and as always, I do have it on good authority. A grand time was had by all. The Sooners and Cowboys open conference play tomorrow. Oklahoma with Big 12 newcomer Cincinnati, OSU at Iowa State. Both coaches say they will be in for a tough test. This is going to be a, a line of scrimmage football game, both sides uh, of the ball. Um, they're physical, they're relentless, uh, aggressive, confident, all those things. They're doing what they do. Um, and then they're a 13 personnel team on offense. And they're going to do what they do. They are what they are that I've known for years. They do what they do and they are what they are. That's, yeah. well, I guess when you've been around as long as Mike Gundy has, you can say stuff like that. I guess that's right. And you know what you mean. Which kind of, yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of like Oklahoma weather is going to do what it's going to do. do. It is what it is. What it is. Uh, amen on that. Uh, so I, tonight, though, perfect weather for the high school football games. It couldn't get much better. Nice little southeast breeze blowing through. Tomorrow, gusty south winds, and that threat of severe weather will be late afternoon, primarily from about 6 p.m. to about 1 a.m. in the morning. Large hail, damaging winds, isolated tornado risks, and some flooding is possible. A few sprinkles will be ending it all on Sunday and then awesome weather for the Tulsa State Fair. I mean, it's like I almost made a mistake because 87, 86, 87. Awesome 86. for the 11 days of awesome. Awesome. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Rock on. <laughs> Enjoy your Friday night. See you later.